name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Amen. So today we read the Gospel of Zacchaeus. Jesus had just entered into the city of Jericho. He's on his way to Jerusalem. And you remember when he enters the city, he runs into a blind man, the son of Timinius, blind Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus, we usually say in English, right? Bartimaeus means the son of Timothy, blind, blind Bartimaeus, and heals him, and he's going through the city. Uh, this is probably the reason that there's this huge crowd following him, uh, that's a, this done a very significant miracle. This man that everybody knew had been sitting at the city gate begging for years and years and years. They all knew him, and, and suddenly he's healed. You have to keep in mind that every miracle Jesus does, he does for both the body and the soul, right? For soul and body. I think one of the reasons we probably don't see as many miracles as we like is we just, when we pray, we want God to do miracles to make our body better, to make our life better, right? But not necessarily to transform our soul. Uh, but we can see that in the scripture, right, when Jesus does a miracle, people follow him, right? And that's the point. The point of a miracle isn't so that you don't have to stop worrying about how you can pay your bills or... You don't have to, uh, you know, have pain in your left foot or whatever it is, right? I mean, it's part of that. That's part of it. But it's so that you will follow Christ. And one of the things that's pointed out about um, um, Zacchaeus is that, you know, he, in order to see Christ, he had to have already met him in his heart. Because it was meeting Christ in his heart that motivated him to go see Christ, to climb up the sycamore tree, which the fathers consistently interpret as the uh, elevating of our soul through prayer and ascetic disciplines so that we can see Christ. To be motivated to do that, you kind of already have to have met him somehow. Right? We meet him in our heart first, and then we strive to see him. One of the things that has always bothered me about this passage is that when he, Nicodemus, or Nicodemus, Zacchaeus says, Behold, half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I've defrauded anyone, I pay back four times, is that in Greek, as in English, it's in the present tense. He's not making a declaration about something he's going to start doing from that point forward. He's talking about something he always does. Right? In fact, the Greek present tense is most accurately translated into English as the present progressive. Behold, I am giving half of my income to the poor, and if I have been defrauding anyone, I pay them back four times. You see, the crowd, the crowd when they saw Jesus go into his house said, you know, oh, they were murmuring, behold, he's going to eat with a sinner. St. Nikolai Vilimirovich in his uh, commentary on that says, ah, it's that, that human, very, very human tense tendency for the mouth to run faster than the mind. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I've got that problem. The mouth runs a lot faster than the mind does. I say things before I think about them. But Jesus already knew Zacchaeus. And you might ask the question, well, if he was such a good man, why was he a tax collector? Uh, and, you know, we 
we look at things from our perspective that uh, people get to choose their own careers. But any of, any of you who've lived, say, in more repressive places in the world or uh, under maybe in Mexico where the gang violence is extremely strong, you often don't have any choice. Uh, there was a group of Me uh, Mennonites actually in Mexico uh, who were caught smuggling all sorts of drugs up into the United States. And when they caught them, they were so relieved. And the, uh, the US border people said, you know, why are you relieved? He says, because we hate doing this. But the mafia came to us and said, you can have gold or you can have lead. You choose. Yeah. That's how it is in a lot of parts of the world. And when the Roman Empire came in and they needed to collect Texas, to collect, ta collect taxes, Texas, collect ta taxes, they just went up to somebody and said, hey, you look like a good tax collector. I'm expecting this much money next week. If you don't have it, we're going to cut off your right foot. If you don't have it, we're going to take your daughter. Right? A lot of times people don't have choices. And they look like they're very evil people. But here we've got a guy, Zacchaeus, and apparently secretly, because the only one who knows about it is Jesus until he says something, he's been secretly giving half of his income to the poor. And if... And then, of course, he's a chief chat tax collector, so he's probably got baby tax collectors under him. What do you call the next level down under chief, right? Yeah, subordinate tax collectors, right? And maybe they cheated somebody, and so he pays them back. You know, there's a verse in, in the Wisdom of Sirach, which traditionally we called that book Ecclesiasticus. It's not in the Protestant Bible. It's in the Catholic and Orthodox Bible. It says that sin is wedged between the buying and the selling. Sin is wedged between the buying and the selling. And so often in life, we find ourselves in situations that aren't as black and white as we wish they were. And what do we do in those situations? And, you know, maybe those of us who have not been there say, oh, well, you know, you go run and find a white situation because we won't have any darkness at all in anything we do. Well, good for you. But most people I know don't live in that world. Most people I know find life quite messy. And what do you do when it's messy? What do you do when you try to do the right thing, but the system you're in kind of oppresses some people, right? You can't buy <laughs> shoes that weren't made by child labor somewhere in the world, right? I mean, there aren't, unless you make them yourself, most of our clothing is made by people who are paid, what, a dollar a day? I, I know this because I used to live in L.A. and uh, I used to have to go through the garment district all the time and they would have these crowded rooms with these illegal Mexicans crammed in there, sewing like crazy. I had a neighbor who was also illegal, he made, he, he worked in the diamond district. Yeah, he worked, and he was a diamond sorter, a very skilled person. He would sort quality, color, all of that, diamonds. You know what he got paid? A nickel a diamond. He was illegal. Right? So anybody who has a diamond ring, have you, too, been participating in oppression in the world, maybe? 
Maybe he didn't mean to, but it's, like I said, life is really messy. We may not want to oppress anybody, but we do. So what can we do about it? Well, I think we can do what Zacchaeus did. Right? We can say, look, I know that people suffer in various ways because of my blessings. So maybe what I need to do is take a hunk of it and give it back. Right? It, it's not going to fix everything, but it's the least I can do. I can do something, right? And if I, if I do really cheat someone and find out, if there is something I can do about it, you know, according to the law of Moses, I looked, I looked it up this morning. According to the law of Moses, if, if someone steals and they get caught, they have to pay back twice. But if you cheat somebody or you somehow take something that belongs to someone else and you realize it and you give it back freely, like this, you're not caught stealing it, but you're freely trying to make good, it says you only have to add one-fifth of the value. And here's Zacchaeus. He's adding four times the value. Maybe he thought it was the least he could do. Maybe he thought, at least I should do something. And I, I think that that's something we can think about, especially as in two weeks we start the Triodion to go into Lent, starting to go into Lent, and say, Lord, what can I do? How, what's the least I can do? I can't probably fix all the injustice in the world, right? I don't know how to make my own shoes, right? I, I don't, what, what, guide me, Lord, and maybe God will give each of us some way, some secret way. We don't have to announce it from a housetop. Some way that we too can offer back so that God will have mercy on us and, and say to us, as he said to Zacchaeus, today salvation has come to this home. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.